we'll get a little house band experience playing over there. Well, thank you guys so much for that lovely intro. That was that was really something special. I, I think that's the first time that's ever happened on the Pink Sofa Hour. So thank you so much, and welcome to the Pink Sofa Hour. With me today, everybody but Jay. We are uh, very live, in, in <laughs> one might say. <laughs> How do you guys feel today? Good, yeah. Excellent. Good. Yeah, actually fantastic. I'm really excited about this. I'm excited to, to have you guys. My name is Pedro, I'm the host. Uh, why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves? He doesn't like to talk. All, all at once, one at a time. <laughs> That's cool. Um, he communicates through these strings. His name's Aaron, fucking animal of a guitarist. Uh, got Norton on the drums, say what's up. What's up? Um, my name's uh, Nate, you can find me on social media as uh, Saxman Nate. And uh, my name's Jordan Lovinger. Heck yeah. Yeah. If you want to check that flow out, all different stages. Thank you guys for being here. So tell me, how long have you guys been a band? You sound pretty tight. Uh, so we've been playing together like as a group for probably two and a half years. I'd say like COVID hit and I saw it as an advantage to like kind of play with musicians way out of my league. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I started reaching out to basically, I, I just started hashtag Denver drums, Denver sax, Denver this. And I was able to scout every single musician because musicians wanted to play out. And, you know, it's really hard for them to say, like, oh, I, I, not that I don't care about COVID, but it's like this calling in my soul, you know, is way louder than anything that could ever happen to me. So I was fortunate to really hand select these guys. And um, I just came back from a trip from Tulum where I spent a month there recording an album with like studio musicians there. Wow. And they liked the sounds and that was it. It was like a match made in having one rehearsal and everyone looked at each other and like, yeah, I fuck with it. Very cool. Very cool, man. So we've got a tenor sax, guitar, five string bass. Five string My man. Specifically uh, got for this band. That's awesome. Because they like playing everything in E flat. <laughs> I used to tune my fourth string down, and this was the one band that I would be playing there, so I would be like half a step off, which is a little bit too much punk. Yeah. So uh, when I was in San Francisco, I picked up a five string just for playing with these guys. Heck yeah, you got the low string tuned to E flat, or <laughs> you got it to B? To B yeah. yeah, so it's standard tuning five string. I've got a five string myself, but I've got the B string on top. So it's like a piccolo bass. People call it something like that. Yeah. So, uh, Jordan, how long have you been playing the uh, drums? Uh, all my life, pretty much. Yeah. Little drummer boy. Yeah. yeah. And I started in third grade. So. Heck all yeah. The, all the standard uh, school stuff, you know, jazz band, uh, all, all that, on into college. Nice. And uh, took a break when I had kids. And I see. Started yeah. Started playing again about ten years ago, I'd say. Did you? Um, did you play jazz drums originally, or was jazz kind of something you picked up? Most most of my background was jazz oriented, um, but being a working drummer, I'll play country or whatever. It cool. Needs, needs a beat, yeah. Cause you, so you do a lot of like studio drumming. I do studio drumming. I do live drumming. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Do you guys all kind of consider yourselves studio musicians at this point, basically? I know um, Nate, you play in like six bands or something like that, right? Yeah, I'm doing I do, I do this. I have an 80s and 90s tribute group that I play with in uh, Colorado Springs called Mirror Shades that just started up recently. Nice. Uh, been... Mirror Shades? Yeah. Um, yeah, we just started that group up. It was a whole wild thing where a few of us uh, walked out on another guy who was running a really bad band. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I won't mention any names, but um, yeah, like right? about three of us just kind of got fed up and we're like, we're going to go do our own thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that happens. You know, the yeah, music scene kind of gets recycled, yeah. exactly. It also gets stronger because of that kind of stuff, you know? People, shitty people kind of get pushed away, and right. the cool people kind of get closer together. Right. Yeah. Jordan, how about you? Mostly jazz trained, or? Uh, 
yeah, so I hear a little in slap in there. That was yeah, I grew up in Washington, D.C. I am mostly jazz trained. Um, but, so I grew up in D.C. and I was trained by jazz musicians on guitar. But then I wanted to learn bass and I wanted to play house gigs. Easiest way to learn bass, start with punk music, right? Sure. Do simple triad music. Yeah. So I was running around the punk scene doing that. What's my age again? But at the same time, <laughs> uh, right now I am a professional audio engineer, audio producer. Oh, uh, sick. So I work for Observer Media, and I, I head their products. So uh, my style is hip-hop, out of necessity, like you, I rent. So I couldn't, even though I did a lot of apprenticing at um, Blue House Studios and other like professional recording studios, I had to get everything to sound good in mm -hmm. one bedroom. Yeah. Um, and that's where also starting multiple instruments come up, because as you know, producing a show, sometimes you got to fill in on everything if you can't subcontract out. Yeah, I mean, most of the stuff in here is, believe it or not, is actually mine. I, I also do a lot of music production and stuff, but uh, the cameras are fairly new. Uh, I just got into photography through this show in particular, and it's been really fun. But uh, Aaron, you're up next. Do you want to say something through the guitar? or? Yeah. <laughs> Classic C chord, yeah. of course. Did you uh, learn guitar because you wanted to play in a jazz slash punk slash hip hop slash? Telling the truth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess yeah. Nice. <laughs> Good answer. Excellent. Um, Jay, yeah, I know um, you, you've had some sing training, right? Actually, uh, voice training. Only in the last like four years have I actually like taken it seriously. So. I love to sing. I would sing all the time. I'd make up my own songs. Like from a young age, I was writing a lot, and I was going to a lot of concerts. Very involved in the scene, and people kept telling me, like friends, close friends, close families, because I went to school with, like, oh, you're tone deaf, you're tone deaf, and I was always afraid to kind of like mm. go public with all these things that I've been working on. And one day I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna go to the ear doc, ear nose throat doctor, and they put me in a booth and they tested it. I have perfect tone. 100 for 100 on every single level and it really fucking hurt me and I said you know what I gotta not listen to people I gotta just listen to what's within and I started hitting the studio and like, this was back when I lived in Brooklyn and I you know uh, it's funny like the genre that that we really bring out like that pop punk element is because of this kid who just posted Alan he used to take my ass to a bunch of like punk shows <laughs> and uh, like I never had a car or whatever and he would he really like helped shape uh, some of the sounds. We went to like 11 all-time low shows together, you know? But anyway, it was just like, uh, it was a big revelation for me and I was able to take the next step and of course, like, there's voices live in my head and uh, I'm blessed to consider myself a warrior for fighting them every day. There you go. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough, you know, having, having demons in general. It's something that I think a lot of music comes from and being able to kind of confront it in such a public way it's uh it's powerful it's transformative so it's definitely cool that you're you're taking that work on because it's work you know um so you recently released a chanaka single you want to talk a little bit about that Absolutely. <laughs> i listened to it it's pretty funny man behind the music over here so you wanted to know a little bit of like how we create songs the initial batch was just a bunch of studio musicians in tulum like we said but now it's kind of like whoever's around will show up and otherwise it's mainly me and Aaron and we'll just hit the ground from the bottom, just drums, bass, guitar, just building. And I told them, I said, I want to write a song about Hanukkah because there's so many Christmas songs and the one Hanukkah song that we have from Adam Sandler, like, it's a silly song, you know? And it's, it's more than, than a silly holiday. It, it was like, you know, a big war, the underdog story, it's very gory. It's become a blue Christmas, you know? It's become like, oh, let's put up decorations and let's have a Hanukkah party and give gifts. Like, none of that is the tradition. The tradition is to light candles and talk about the story and spend time with your family. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like, I love Hanukkah parties. Still invite me, but I wanted to give more to the, to the world. Like, hey, this is a real soul. There's a real story here. There's a big, strong female lead in there, Judith Maccabee. Mm. So, you know, and it kind of really gives you that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a pretty powerful sentiment to to share. It's not usually what holiday music tends towards. 
So it's not Christmas <laughs> because it's a different holiday. That's uh, what I'm trying to tell you. Right. Not holiday music. It's Hanukkah, Hanukkah, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Music. Right. I mean, Christmas certainly has its uh, darker side of the tradition as well. But um, it's All cool that you've. All written by Jews, by the way. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you said that you come from a very specific Jewish tradition too, right? Did you want to talk a little bit about that being? Uh, sure. I mean, my, having that Arabic background yeah, and my, my, being Jewish. Uh, my grandfather came from Syria, and they were expelled from there for being Jewish. Uh, before that, you know, the Spanish Inquisition is my heritage. Uh, they were in Syria for King David times all the way through, uh, you know, my grandfather's times. They were expelled. He moved to Lebanon because it was a neighboring city, and they, they lived there. My father was born there, and then not too long after that, they were kicked out again. And, uh, you know, uh, it's just a constant level of oppression that builds like this big hard shell uh, on top of the whole Jewish guilt, shame, religion, there's all this of like oppression on top of it. And uh, I've been really lucky to really do a lot of generational healing uh, yeah, for, that's tough. for the coming generations. And yeah, just so many different types of fucked up. You know, I, I did a, a political science class and the professor says, why are you here? I said, well, I'm Jewish and Arab. And he said, you know, this is not therapy. <laughs> so... Well, I think that generational trauma, you know, that's the kind of thing that takes a long time to get over. But being able to confidently say the, the trauma stops with me, I think, is a great first step towards kind of making that healing start to happen, you know. Um, so I was curious, the name Everybody But Jay, where, where does that come from? That's, that's kind of a particular, it, it's kind of like the opposite of like Jay and the Jaybirds or Jay and the... Yeah, the Miller. jazz band. You got like Steve yeah. Miller band and like all <laughs> these guys. And honestly, it's Steve Miller is not the most impressive person. Like the drummer and Bruce Springsteen is fucking amazing. You know, like sure. like he should also be included. Especially like I said, I was mean Max Weinberg. Thank you. See, I didn't even know his name. <laughs> He's on the Tonight Show. I don't watch it. I don't watch it. <laughs> wasn't, that, wasn't that called the Max Weinberg Orchestra? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the point is, like, people people don't know these things, and they don't know these musicians. And beyond that, uh, I think at first it started as like, a, I'm not proud of my voice, and everybody I'm playing with is way better and more trained with me than me. And now it's become, no, like, this is about everybody, and I'm glad I'm part of it. But it's just about everybody, and we're, it's a group project, and every sound is so amazing. Just like, you know? Yeah, you know, I think that's what makes the best projects is when everybody is contributing a little something. Um, music is very much a shared experience. Even if it's just one person on a stage, you're still sharing it with the audience, which inevitably kind of changes your own perspective around how it is that you're doing it. And alternatively, even like in the moment, it changes your mind about how you're going to improvise something or how you're even going to talk to the audience? Obviously, being a front man, um, being being front, a front person, front person, <laughs> um, you end up talking to the audience a lot. Do you have any favorite banter that you've had before at a show that you'd like to share? Just, any favorite things you've said? Or it's honestly just always from the soul. Like I just like to tell them a tidbit about the song, where it came from, maybe a lyric, maybe how I'm feeling. And just, I just give it to them raw as it is. There, there's nothing rehearsed between songs. So all you guys have played how many shows together at this point? I don't know. I don't know. Two hands? Two hands. Three hands? Yeah, like two hands and one foot, some, maybe? Some feet, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> plus, maybe, yeah. We've, we played a bunch. We're blessed. To, nice. Uh, it, it, yeah, I'm a salesperson at heart. So if we want to play gigs, I just have to go in there and, and tell them we're playing. What's your uh, favorite experience you've had at a venue? I got one. Go, Jordan. So, Hit us, Jordan. Uh, I think it was the second gig since I got, because I started off as a side man. It's like the first gig I think that we actually did. It was at Monkey Barrel. Yeah, and I was we used to have a residency there. Yeah, it was a crazy show. Keep telling us. Um, and I was taking a bass solo, um, and my boss from my last job showed up. And in the middle of my bass show solo, Front of my colleagues, 
everybody there. Jay fucking pulls out a joint. And in the bar. Handing me the joint on stage. I have this. We have a sick photo. photo. Yeah. Favorite like photo of me playing. And so I'm just taking fucking a huge hit while starting to do like a semi slap solo. On stage. We used to get up free joints at our shows. Uh, oh, nice! Yeah, wow. Get that being like a jazz side man. You know, you don't get <laughs> Typically not. No, you have to definitely drift a little bit more into the hip hop world to start having random joints handed to you on stage. Yes. But you know, it depends on what kind of jazz you play sometimes. That's really cool. Anybody have any other fun stories from from shows? I mean, honestly, that that also was probably my my favorite one for personal reasons. Uh, that actually was my album release party for my solo project. It's uh, last we, birthday. Slash my, it was nice. my birthday. Uh, no, it was just a really fun time. We had a really great lineup of people. Uh, my stuff, there's uh, these guys' this stuff, and we had some people go on after. Um, well, what's the name of the solo project? Uh, so, just like I said on my social media, everything I do it falls under the name Saxman Nate. Um, and I did my I did, I did a full electronic jazz album, which I had started right around the same time nice. that these guys got in contact with me. Uh, and that album was called Peace, My Dear. And actually, this band occasionally, we haven't done it in a while, um, does play the title track from that album as well. Cool. Do you uh, like Lewis Cole by any chance? I do like Lewis Cole. You know he's coming to Boulder Theater? I do. I already bought tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just splurged on a big concert and went to see Snoop Dogg and T-Pain. Ooh, nice. <laughs> so That's I gotta like, be careful with my money, the boy will kill me. I'm a, I'm a Lewis Cole maniac. I, oh, yeah. I, I've listened to him. I only am missing one of his albums. And um, it's gonna be really exciting to see Genevieve Vartati with him, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was actually gonna mention a little something about Genevieve Vartati because it feels like there's a little bit of a similar energy with what it is that you do, Jay. Um, Genevieve is known kind of as like the, the punk pixie of jazz that like sort of defies a lot of jazz expectations but still kind of does it in a tasteful way and um, kind of some people hate her you know but like in a in like a way that you can't help but respect because she's breaking traditions left and right and she's just a lot of fun to listen to do you, do you feel like you connect with that a little bit when you said breaking traditions yes you know like that's the that's the part of punk that i love the angst and the anger i don't need i can do without that i got nothing but love for everybody and it's unconditional i just don't like fucking rules don't tell me what to do. I'm such a good person. I don't have to filter what I'm saying because I'm not going to say anything racist or homophobic or, you know, I don't have to, you know, abide by your stupid barrier of a rule around a rule to make sure that something doesn't happen that might lead to something into something. Let me fucking live, damn it, you know? <laughs> I, think I, I think I get it. I think I get it, Jay. Um, so did you want to talk a little bit about what happened with dinner and a show? I'm curious. Yeah, sure. Um, it so sounds like something kind of changed in the songwriting process around then. Yeah, so uh, essentially, like I said, third time around, I was on a trip in Tulum with a few friends. I bumped into my sister who had a residency at a place called Radio Tulum. I didn't know. I knew she was there. I didn't know that I was going to bump into her. I knew she was working. I didn't know to what extent. She's like, no, it's at the radio station there. and you should actually go and meet the head of the radio station and maybe he'll record some of your music. And I had just been there just like on vacation. So of course I had my notebook and I'm always writing and I had a bunch of songs. I was listening to a lot of like jazz and also a lot of like Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin. So that's kind of where that blend came. And uh, I said, you know, I'm gonna put out an album in one month. It's a one month project. And uh, we hired some studio musicians in pesos, way more affordable. And we just got to work and I was like, oh, I'm gonna pump out this album. And I realized that the recording studio wasn't really up to the par that I wanted it. I wanted it to sound more studio and, and not so much like grassroots. And we started building, rebuilding one track at a time. And I read an interview with Sam Hunt where he's like, I don't release albums anymore. I release singles. Why should I wait until I have eight, nine, 10, 11 tracks just so people can hear my music? That's like not, not, it's not in the spirit of art. So, uh, you know, yeah. I, I kind of really, it touched me, and uh, that's what we do. You know, the song's ready, the people should hear it. There's no, like, waiting. There's no building a hype around it. it. 
it's for the, it's for everybody. But Jay, makes sense. And it sounds like you've got um, about at least an hour of music that you guys play together at shows, right? Do you do you feel like you've got like a longer set in you? If somebody wanted you to play like two or three hours, would you be able to? Yeah, so I run that. Like, like I have like that natural sales salesperson in me, right? So, the so you want to say we, yes? The first time we got a gig, <laughs> the guy's like, "Can you do two, three hours?" I responded yes, and then texted them, and we realized, you know what? We can make up songs on the spot. Like, we <laughs> yeah. pump out songs like it's water. So we literally bullshitted like an entire hour of work, <clears throat> and we played our like forty-five minutes of songs. And Nate's been the big push to like, we should write more. We should write more. Bless your fucking heart, thank you. Because we should write more. Because sometimes I'm there and I'll say like some lyrics, and I'm like. Thank God their audio system's not that good because I that <laughs> word didn't make sense. It just rhymes with orange, you know. <laughs> so, sounds like a challenge. It sounds it sounds a little stressful, but it also sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, well said. <laughs> yeah. So, would you guys like to start getting into some of your music? Do you think it's time to hear the first track? Do you want to talk about it a little bit before um, we get going? Yeah, this is like the song. That's kind of like yelling at the other person on the phone. Like, it's really me. I'm the person on the phone where I'm like self conscious about like texting back to a girl I think is pretty. Um, and it's kind of like, just send it. Just, just fucking say what you mean and say it from the heart. And uh, yeah, uh, it's called SMS. Excellent. Let her rip. One, two. <laughs> sure if that table can take any weight but 
I've looks like it gym. handled it pretty I've been well. In the gym, bro. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, guys. That, that was uh, that was nice. That was nice. And it, that song was called SMS. Is yeah. that right? So, and also, like, I put things in parentheses always because I want the song to have like that art aspect of it, but I also want you to be able to find it easily. Like, oh, they say there's a feeling 80 fucking times. I should be able to find it that way too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, me too. <laughs> You said SMS, what? we usually call it, I got a feeling. Yeah, I write it in the thing, because I know they're going to remember it as feeling. Why do I make it more confusing for the people, but it deserves a title. I strongly appreciate songs that have parentheses in them, in the title specifically. I mean, it's hard to include parentheses musically. Especially the worm. But, uh, the what? The worm. The worm. Ah, yes. This song has no parentheses. In parentheses, the parentheses song. <laughs> right. That could be a weird nesting recursive parentheses situation if you let it happen. But um, nice job. Once again, guys, you guys sound really good. And uh, I can attest to that specifically this time because I think I've figured out all the audio issues from the first few episodes. So I'm excited for you guys to hear that in post. Now, um, we could keep going if you'd like do some more tracks or we can take it down a level and, and just chat for a second as well. It's your show, boss. <laughs> All right. Well, in that case, we're going to just take a quick 30 second break and you got sponsors? be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsor time. And we are back. Still here with everybody but Jay. Um, once again, I think that that was a really nice first performance, not counting, of course, what you guys did to play us in, which was totally improvised too, right? Yes, sir. Nice. How, how do you feel about improvisation in general on the musical level? Do you guys feel really comfortable improvising? Is it something that you struggled with for a long time? Is it something that came really naturally to you right away? Yeah, I mean, if you're in practice uh, to live in the present moment, I think we all do it in our own way. Jordan, huge meditator. You know, Nathan, oh, like from Nathan, by the way, can you have an like, applause button or something? He served in. For, I could, uh, I could, I could play the applause veteran, button. Right? Am I getting that right? Navy? Uh, Marine Corps. Marine Corps. <laughs> Marine Corps veteran. <laughs> so, you know, just. Uh, you know, he's got that live in that moment attitude uh, from there. I don't know if he practiced other things. Aaron, also very mindful. I was uh, practicing empathy. I was spending time with, you know, himself and his mind and, and doing those healthy practices. Norton comes from a long line of that. You know, if you want to talk about any of you guys want to talk about that. Yeah, I, I mean, we got a big room, Mike. Everybody can, everybody yeah. can talk. Yeah. In fact, Jordan, when you talk, if you want to speak up just a little bit more, that, sure. that would be awesome. Okay. Why don't, why don't we practice that now? Jordan, what's the most recent thing that you've had on your Spotify? On my Spotify? Mm -hmm. Or whatever you use to listen to music. Um, I'm listening to a lot of... Uh, I'm listening to Marvin... So to Mayer's version of Marvin Gaye's Inner City Blues. So that's oh. the next thing I'm going to work on tracking down this weekend. Um, after this, I'm going to go home... Um, do some psychedelics with my friend and try to record some music. Suppository, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, suppository. Suppository psychedelics. I don't think I've heard of those yet. But yeah, that's what's on my. That's what's been on my playlist recently. Um, that and a lot of Luther Vandross. Ooh, nice. Well, I actually nice. used to play with uh, his original sax player. Nice. He's a he's a guy from he's a guy from Pittsburgh. I met while I was out there. Floyd King. Cool. Very cool. Huh. wow. That that is pretty cool. Um, anybody else want to chime in on things that you've been listening to recently that you enjoy a lot? Or Local Denver scene is nasty, just in general. <laughs> just true. in general, if you live in anywhere, anywhere you live, hit up Facebook page and look up like 10 mile radius, 
look up what events are going on and just find the grassroots bands. There's so much talent out there, and just like that's that's what I've been just trying to find the, the baby baby bands that to rock. Tonight so, at the Bobcat, we've got uh, Grace Divine playing. I'm probably gonna go there. So if anybody is listening to this and wondering what you should do tonight, I would say the Bobcat Lounge is right over Skylark, and um, it's gonna be a really good show. Jay, also, uh, next week you're playing with Blank Slate, the first guest of the Pink Sofa Hour um, at Goose Town. You know how right? we met? Please tell me more. I was on a Tinder date with this girl, and she's like, oh, you should come to this uh, Goose Town Tavern. Uh, they're, this band Blank Slate's playing. I know one of their, the drummer's mom from my hometown. I'm like, oh, cool. Oh, Pam? Pam. <laughs> Shout out, Pam. We love you. Pam Nation. Pam Nation. She, she does, wrote, like, basically the same thing as this show. That's, that's like, her, her gig. Oh, really? She yeah. kicks ass. She's actually, like, working on a bunch of, like, apps, and she runs a music festival in yep. Pleasantville, Pleasantville, New York. But, yeah, so I was like, oh, cool. And I ended up just chatting Pam the whole time. I was out in New York visiting family. Me and Pam went to a couple shows. And then nice. I just made up Tess, her daughter, and I was like, yeah, we're planning a show next month. You're coming. And she's like, okay. We're in, and yeah. Sick. Sorry, I cut your ass off. My fault. What kind of music are you listening to? Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm always, I'm always so weird and bopping around. I mean, recently I've been listening to a lot of, uh, well, they're, uh, they're a smaller group named Marbin, uh, M-A-R-B-I-N. B-I-N. Uh, they're like a, uh, so they're like a, a fusion jazz trio. Um, Ooh. And I've, I've always had this dream of like starting some. I like I like saxophone fronted bands, obviously for, for obvious reasons. Uh, you know, Marvin is a. You know, can't just, imagine they're, why. They're just a soprano sax guitarist and a drummer. Um, and I've I've been wanting to start like my dream band eventually uh, here soon. Um, and I've been I'm, I kind of want to model it like after Marvin a little bit, but also kind of like I don't know if you're familiar with Corey Wong and like uh, Volpeck. Of course, yeah, and, uh, yeah. We love I Volpeck. love I big love, fan. Uh, his his side project, the Fearless Flyers. Also actually. great. Uh, yeah, Nate Smith on the yeah. drums. Absolute maniac. You know, in a recent interview, I heard uh, Lewis Cole. Actually, it wasn't a recent interview, but Lewis Cole talks about uh, who he looks up to on the drums, and it's Nate Smith. Yeah. That's who he wishes he would sound more like. And it, I like that band in particular, Fearless Flyers, because it, having that drummer that's just like so funkified, like makes everything just sound better. Just, you know. You don't need a, he doesn't need a whole lot, you know, in the, most of the videos he's sitting there with a hi-hat, a snare drum, and, right. and a kick, kind of like Norton is over there right exactly. now. Exactly, killing um, it. And that's kind of the vibe that I wanted to go with. I got a, I got a drummer who, in mind, who who loves that stuff, and he's, he's he, his main project, he's actually signed to a, to a, a small label in Colorado Springs uh, called KRM Records, uh, and their band is uh, Lambed, and they do like a lot of he- like heavy metal. Uh, but he loves hip hop and stuff, so I'm trying to get him to do this project. Um, but yeah, nice. so I've been listening to like a lot of Fearless Flyers, Wolfpack, Marvin. I just kind of like want to meld, meld all that into some kind of like weird fusion project. <laughs> cool, nice. I little mind meld. I actually was listening to Wolfpack on my way here. Nice. So I'm the, every time I've listened to a Wolfpack song, it's like come up in Spotify as recommended, and then I automatically go, "Oh shit, who's that bassist?" And I look over, and it's you know Wolfpack playing. <laughs> Joe right. Dart again. <laughs> but I think it's Can't like, get away from that guy. It's what I'm trying to bring here a lot. Like if you hear when we improvise stuff that I start off, or when we have songs that have a little bit more space, I'm trying to bring in that like okay, we're gonna hit a couple of simple chords and then some melody, um, because it works so well with Nate particularly. To Heck get yeah. Crescendo in that space, and we're tight enough to pull it off. Yes. You guys definitely sound tight enough. Would you like to give us another example? All right, let's hit it. Yeah, so this song, you can start. You can, you can start it. It's called "Got a License," and um, you know, Aaron writes like a shit ton of music on his own. Um, I heard this one that he's writing. I said, "Dude, this is a, my song. I'm stealing it." Uh, I failed my road test seven times until I passed. This is my song, bro. <laughs> so uh, I adopted it. It's called "Got a License." First, you don't succeed, and second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, seven. Just don't give up. Just keep fucking throwing shit at the wall because that's what this life's about. And uh...
like that one a lot, actually. That was that was clean, but also kind of aggressive. You know what I mean? It has it has parts that get really lively and parts that kind of just give you a nice taste of the of the sweetness that belongs in that song. It's it's cool. Um, Good job, bro. Now <laughs> have you ever heard of a band called the Kaiser Chiefs? Yes. You like them? I'm not familiar with their music. I just heard of them. You know? <laughs> nice. You should you should listen to them. I think that they used to insure me. Insure you? Yeah. Oh, they brought back my health insurance. Kaiser. Oh, Permanente. <laughs> nice one, bro. Nice. Um, no, the the singer actually uh, it just triggered a memory for me. Like it feels like you kind of have very similar energy in terms of like how you use your voice to the singer in that band, and um, they are a lot more on the rock spectrum of things but definitely kind of very punky and boisterous kind of sounding, you know. Not like super singing sort of dynamics, more of like you, you do something, I think I've got the right name for it. Now I looked it up after last week's episode. Um, there's a German word for it, it's called Sprechstimmer. It's like a word I learned in chorus a long time ago. It's when you're like sing, it literally means sing talking, where you're like talking but you're also hitting notes at the same time. So, um, something I kind of look into. Is that something you do on purpose, or? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's just like my, my, my Brooklyn in me, you know? Yeah. It's yeah, there's a lot of personality when I'm telling you how I'm feeling, you know? <laughs> You'd like to gesticulate. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of uh, Spectrum, uh, I have ADHD, so you're going to make me a playlist of these guys you want me to check out. I'm absolutely down for it. Happily. You know? Totally, man. Sprech. Absolutely. Sprechstimme. Sprechstimme. I don't know. I don't know German. But um, you said you grew up in Brooklyn. Born and raised. That's very cool, man. How long have you been in Colorado? Literally COVID hit, and I was like, why is my house touching my neighbor's house like this? <laughs> I got to get the fuck out of here. So uh, <laughs> I, just, I literally rented a car and just went. Wow. My dad, I'm, like, I'm thinking Denver. I might keep going to California. He's like, Denver, you're in a flyover state during a pandemic? And I was like, yeah, it's not a flyover state. It's a city. He's like, no, you don't know. He, he's old school. He doesn't yeah. know. He thinks it's New York, California, and then that's it. Yeah. But, uh, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. Well, welcome to Colorado. I hope you've been enjoying your stay so far. It's hard not to. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a lovely, lovely state in my opinion. I grew up in Florida, so kind of similarly East Coast refugee kind of status. <laughs> it's uh, a very different world on the East Coast. But, uh, you know, the difference between Brooklyn and Miami, it's... Like the you said, it's a whole spectrum. More old people, it's yeah. Better. More Cubans. Yeah. It's well, well, tons of Cubans, yes. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I think most of us here were at least born on the East Coast. I'm North New York. Are you from the area? New yeah, Jersey. Yeah, yeah. I'm from New York. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Florida? DC. 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 Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh. Pennsylvania. And? Jersey. Jersey. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. We're Good all Northern East State. Coast people. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's pretty fun. I'm thinking Northeast tour somewhere around the summer in time. So. We just got like so many roots over there. It's stupid not to, you know. Yeah, yeah, that totally makes sense. If you need any connections in Miami, hit me up. I, I know a couple people. Um, so that last track, license, got a license. Is there parentheses in that too, or just? I don't know. I think the whole the yeah, like the t song title and the lyrics are all the same. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> um. Do you want to talk about that one a little bit? I, I mean, it kind of speaks for itself, but I feel like you might want to yeah, elaborate he to make, on. Like, Two hundred uh, bucks by putting it in a movie, and he was like, "Look, what do you think of this song?" And I was like, "Dude, it's my song. Like, I literally, that's the whole story." <laughs> and I was like, "It's my song." It's like, I think, and then we went to record it a little bit, and um, and uh, I was I was missing the the words are I could finally live my life independently, and I I couldn't hit the note, and Nate's like, "What about let me grab my keys?" And I was like. I love you, man. Thank you. And that was it. And, uh, yeah. That's what collaborative songwriting is all about, you know? You got you to gotta take the uh, really sick commentary from, from the other band members. I feel like that, that is a really good line, actually. That's Let me grab my song. keys. Of all the music I write, I don't write any music with lyrics in it. <laughs> I write all instrumental music for myself. Sometimes you just get inspired, you <laughs> yeah, know? It's hard to sing with that mouthpiece in, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
That's a sweet mouthpiece, by the way. Oh, that, that color? I mean, I'm a little biased, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, so there's a, there's a company in France that does these 3D. There's actually 3D oui, printed. Oui. Huh. Uh, yeah, they call, they call it, like, shape your own sound. And so, like, I actually just, like, filled out a survey and told them, like, the, uh, I told them what mouthpiece I was currently using and what it wasn't doing that I wanted my new mouthpiece to do. Interesting. They, like, so I, I don't know their whole story, but I think the... The owner and one of the person there like studied like sound acoustics and they like applied that to woodwind mouthpiece making and then they just 3D print them. They send them to you. If you don't like it, you can actually send it back and tell them what that one wasn't doing that you would like it to do. And That's crazy. So I it's like a. I have to send this back. I got it out of the box and I loved it. Cool. <laughs> I filled out a survey. They said they're gonna send me a free huh. MacBook. I didn't get it yet. <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing there he to goes. about this one, but. <laughs> so it's a shaped mouthpiece. That's pretty neat. Yeah. So, uh, is this your usual kit, Norton? Do you play with like more pieces sometimes, or like a real kick drum? Or yeah, that's a great question. I've got, I I have multiple sets that I can pull out depending on what I'm doing. And uh, so you were asking about improv earlier. Yeah. One one of the things I do is uh, I host a Thursday night jam in my garage. Sick. Which is completely, you know, <laughs> guys rehearse all the time. Completely like jam based, right? Like so, it's covers or just jamming over whatever chord pattern. And so we've been doing that for like eight years, and that's opened up a lot of brain cells around improvising and you know not having to know the structure and all the fills and solos in advance. Um. And so in the garage, I've got a, you know, like four tom-toms and a big bass drum and tons of cymbals, and I can make a lot of noise. Yeah. Here and in smaller venues, I don't want to make a lot of noise. I just want to put a rhythm down and, you know, have it fit in. This is a kit I invented when I was playing with a band called Half Pint and the Growlers. They've since moved to Santa Fe. That's a cool name, yeah. by the way. Half she, pint and the growlers. She's about half the size of the rest of us. So <laughs> it was a perfect name. <laughs> half pint is the half pint was the, the lead front singer person. Front person <laughs> and the growlers backed her up. Cool. And uh, we we they were a golden based uh, organization, and we played all over. And uh, we played a lot of smaller venues, but even when we played the bigger venues like uh, Ophelia's or something like that. Oh, I love Ophelia's. Um, mm -hmm. Great this space. was basically what I did for them because they wanted a kind of an old-timey, low-key, not like traditional drum totally. look and feel. Yeah, yeah. Know? Yeah, I mean the cajon kick. Could we hear that cajon kick? Yeah, that's the cajon kick. That's, it's got a yeah, nice little if I wanted thump to, to it. Could... Yep. Nice. Uh, and then you've got like a pedal that I've never seen one of those. Yeah, is, it, so, is that something you kind of? This is actually third generation for me because this I probably invented this. It's my this. great great grandfather. I came up with this idea <laughs> uh, like uh, I'm gonna say five or six years ago, and at the time the pedals were all cable based, and and they'd wear out, and then I'd be in the middle of a gig, and all of a sudden I'd have to be playing like this. That's, that looks annoying. Really <laughs> yeah. fatiguing. I bet. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so I, uh, Drummers I finally complaining. I upgraded to this. It's a direct drive pedal by DW huh. that is bulletproof. And yeah. I'll probably have it the rest of my life. Well, it looks like you turned the beater around oh, by I accident. Did, yeah. I? yeah, I need to uh, Scary. get in there with a key. Around. Turn the so beat and ram. Oh, he's an engineer, by the way. Oh, yeah, sick. Yeah, like not just anyone could do. That. Oh yeah, you're a professor, right? Uh, uh, I'm I'm actually retired. I'm a musician now, but okay. I was uh, uh, I worked for HP for about 37 years, and then I taught math in middle school and high school for a few years, and now I just make music and walk my dog. <laughs> hey, that's that sounds like a good way to good way to live right now, yeah. for sure. Yeah, it's all right. Do you get a, a discount from HP? I Wait, get a discount suck from HP. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not yeah, a great. Don't. <laughs> yeah, don't. It's, it's like going to like Walmart during a sale kind of a oh, thing. Oh, oh, cool. You know, whatever. Yeah, my yeah. last no, the computer I just got is an HP. Yeah, you should. Yeah. I should. Yeah. Yeah, let me know. 
get the, <laughs> the, uh, good deal. the retiree discount. <laughs> Aaron, you got any comments on improvisation? I, I can tell that you're a pretty practiced guitarist, and you can kind of riff on all kinds of stuff, right? Uh, I try to, yeah. I mean, I always improvise because, like, I can't play the right notes, so... Ah. Uh. The, the I will make them right approach. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's all subjective. I mean, they're all, they've always been right to me, so... They sound, they sound right to me, too. <laughs> he's very humble for those who don't understand that on the live anytime any like touring act comes through town obviously not like a top 40 or major label because they got their own like guns but anytime somebody comes through town and they need to hire a guitarist anytime there's a wedding and they're like in aspen and they're about to blow a giant load on the band like they call aaron because they know he fucking yeah. carries the band he's the fucking man like he's so good it's it's crazy. Let's, like, let's I get a round of applause for Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah, you know, I've always just kind of... Uh... Shredded. Um, <laughs> no, no, I mean, I can't, you know, my hands are like, you know, I can't really shred, but... Uh... I can make stuff up, so... So it's kind of been my strong point. Definitely sounds like it. By the way, um, in case the, anybody that's tuned in doesn't know, we uh, do have a monitor in front of us that we can read the chat. So in case you guys have questions for the band, please feel free to type them into the chat. We will Nothing's be reading them. Nothing's off the table. You can ask us anything. Uh, Shout some out to some things might be off the table. so much great stuff to say. Yeah, <laughs> Alan, Alan has been very uh, active in the chat, Warped Tour. He's, he's known Jay for a very long time. We snuck into four Warped Tours together. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that? Uh, we used to go and uh, buy like the security vest at like the department store for like oh, $11 classic. and we'd go to the guy at the exit and be like, you know, we go learn the guy at one exit's name and we go, John said, he even gave us his jacket. He said, tell them they're good. They're good to go in. Their <laughs> tickets are inside. I confirmed it. And we pulled this classic shit Classic social three, engineering <laughs> tactic. <laughs> Very good. For like three, four years, we pulled this shit up. We used to hang out with all the bands. I smoked joints with Bowling for Soup. They had me on stage one time, Bowling for Soup. They're really cool people. Um, just hang out with Kosha Dills. I don't know if anyone knows that guy. There's a lot a lot of guys from like Warped Tour days. Um, and it was just fun. We just hang out in the parking lot and meet all the bands. Uh, <laughs> It only costs eleven dollars. If anyone wants to know, <laughs> security vests tend to be a little cheaper than actual tickets, yeah. bands. Yeah. Um, looks like we've got about ten minutes left. So, did you guys want to play another one, or did you want we're to start play two doing? Red a... light. We're gonna play this one called the Big Bad Betty Show. Okay. And then we're gonna. That's actually coming out on the nineteenth, my birthday. You got an EP coming out. Sure. A, a single. single. It's a Sam single. Sam Hunt. What? Right. Forgot. You're good. Um, <laughs> and then we're going to go into this other one. If there's enough commentary on the board, or if Pedro wants to feed us words, we're just going to make up a song about whatever the fuck you guys want us to. So okay. uh, this was called The Big Bad Betty Show. It comes out on my birthday, which is in, I don't want to watch, a couple days, Thursday. Uh, let's hit it.
yeah. Wow. That's a that's another. I think that, I'm not sure if I like the second one or the third one Can I help you as with my favorite. Like all of them. <laughs> I like all of them. But uh, you know, in my head, I always have some measure of of ranking. But maybe they're all just tied. Um. So we're coming coming towards the end of the show here, and I definitely want to give you guys an opportunity to give some shout outs, say any sort of promo you want to say about, you know, Goose Town, any of the bands that you want to say hello to, anything that sounds, uh, anything that sounds palatable on that end. You uh, have the floor, and you are more than welcome to, to say stuff. Uh, I say thank you to everybody. <laughs> thank you to everybody and all the generations that have come before me and that will come after me. Thank you for doing your best, whatever that was, on your own personal scale. Thank you for the people around me doing their best. And, uh, you know, that, that's why I'm here today, because, you know, we're all just doing our part. And I just want to, I can't exclude anyone. We're all in this together. So I'll just say thank you to everybody all at once. And I know my mom will appreciate her own shout out. So I love you, mom. What's up? Got to give the shout out to the mom. I'm sure she's in the chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a little shy. She won't say nothing. But... It happens. Yeah. It happens. Hi, Mom. Do you want to, like, say something to your wife? Get late tonight or something? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Carol, thanks for Tyler, man. Uh, if, you, uh, if you, anyone wants to, I'm looking forward to this Goose Town gig. That's going to be a lot of fun there you go. with you guys. That's going to be awesome. And, um, oh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just want to give a shout-out to all the people that have supported me playing man like I don't come from a musical family so the fact that my mom and dad and everything were so supportive of me growing up doing this you know giving me the opportunity to go to college for music supporting me when I came to them and said I think I'm going to join the Marine Corps and play in the band like who who, who I was 19 who, who would have thought <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, yeah know, man just anybody who supported me the my solo project this project and any other stuff I'm in uh, thanks a lot Heck yeah. Aaron? Jordan? Here you go. It's a room. Take the mic. This is more for like show. It looks better, yeah. Yeah, it makes me feel good. Cool. <laughs> I don't hold anything. It's a nice mic. SM58. Good old SM58. Uh, shout out Sure Mics. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to Road as well. If you guys want to sponsor me, feel Road, free. Yeah. They're built like tanks. Good stuff. Um, and I'd also like to shout out uh, my newest book that's available on Kindle. Oh, yeah, it's a sick book. It's oh, called damn. An Introduction to Decentralized Finance. If anyone out there is interested oh. in freeing themselves from the tyranny of big money <laughs> and the big banks and having actual freedom and democracy, democracy and Fight the fucking power! system, <laughs> this, this book's a great starting point. I don't care about getting you rich. I care about making you free. <laughs> JS? I just want to shout out to Pink Sofa. Thank you for having us. Oh, Good thank day. you, sir. Friends of mine, click that subscribe button. Hit me up. Like button. I also want to apologize for Aaron. You know, they can <laughs> <laughs> they can run their mouth. He's really Jay's band. It's, it's your fucking Jersey, man. You I know he's a up. he's a Bitcoin bro. What what can you do, yeah, right? You know, <laughs> <laughs> off stage too, man. This guy's a madman. I bet. I bet. Yeah, he's with his shirt hard off, to control. Double fisting. 40s. I, had, I had to tell him to get off the table. That's this motherfucker. Hey, <laughs> on the other hand, dude, 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 diving it up with it. All right. Well, <laughs> I want to give a shout out again to everybody but Jay. Thank you guys so much for coming. This has been oh, the so for hours. Coming. Thank you for coming. Oh, no problem. You got again, girls. thank you, thank you. Uh, next week we've got big dopes. This has been the Pig Sofa Hour. Gentlemen, play us out. Give me that bass line, baby. Oh, this shit's nasty. <laughs>